Hey everyone, Amanda Mazey, Country Roads Trust, Ren Baker, Athletic Director here at WVU. Ren, I would imagine that you are pretty excited to experience your first WVU football season. I really am. Really, a, a lot of the fall sports, you know, it was after fall season before I got here, so I've already caught men's soccer and, and women's soccer. Men's soccer was an exhibition, but, um, but yeah, yeah, I can't wait for football. Um, can't wait for the first home game against Duquesne, but certainly uh, when we uh, get to uh, the backyard brawl, I, I, I've, right here off the bat, we're getting uh, a great game experience. It's sold out and, and can't wait to uh, experience that with all of Mountaineer Nation. Let's talk about the state of WVU athletics. A lot has changed since the last time you and I sat down. Um, you brought Ben Murray back to head up the MAC. Um, a certain baseball coach, my husband, decided that he's going to retire after next season, so I'm working on my honeydew list. So talk about just all of the changes that have been made and where you think this program stands right now. Yeah, I'm really excited about where we're at. You just go back and look at last year. From the time I got here, both basketball teams went to the NCAA tournament. Now, both of those teams have been through a lot uh, since, but um, the terrific season that baseball had, I'm so proud of Coach Maisie and that squad. And um, I had plans for him to coach for a lot longer, but your plans <laughs> won out. Um, and so, uh, but uh, really excited. Um, you know, it transitions, uh, you want them to be smooth and, and, uh, Working with he and Coach Savings through this has is, is, uh, really, I think, brought us all closer together. So very excited about uh, about that. And then, you know, I, th I think uh, getting Ben back is huge. Um, I I'm not always a believer that somebody has to have a connection. What they have to come in with is a heart to want to connect uh, with, with the people. Uh, here, but um, it certainly was an advantage with all of the turnover that's happened in the MAC to be able to get somebody that comes back and doesn't need six months to learn everybody, right? They, they, he already has most of those relationships, and um, so I, I view him as a five-star recruit, and um, we were able to get him uh, back. He went into the portal, uh, <laughs> and the portal delivered him back, so uh, we're excited about that. Well, that's awesome. Let's talk about the changes in the Big 12 as well this summer. Big 12 expanding. We have some more teams coming in. Your thoughts on these teams that are joining? Very excited. I mean, I, I think when we start sitting down talking about expansion as a, as a group of athletic directors, um, this is really where we want to end up. Uh, we thought picking up those four corner schools, if we had an opportunity to, uh, put us in the best position. Uh, geographically, um, you know, it's a little bit of a concern as, as an eastern outlier when you're expanding westward. Uh, so I think we'll have a lot of conversations about can we play more in divisions within those divisions? Can we have 14 pods, especially in our Olympic sports that don't always get to charter? Um, so those are conversations that – We've started to engage in. We had Big 12 meetings in person last week, and, and we'll do more of that. But just when you look at the stability of the of the conference, I mean, it was only two years ago that the Big 12 really looked uh, like it was in peril. And, and growing up in Oklahoma, I'm a lifelong Big Big 12 and Big 8 before that fan. Um, and so, you know, as a fan at that point, not working in the league, but I was really concerned for the league. And so to fast forward and look at where we are, to be able to, to add those schools and, and in, my posi in my opinion, to be able to very clearly establish ourselves as um, in, that, in those top three uh, conferences nationally in terms of stability and brand reach and, and all of that uh, is very important for the Big 12, which is very important for WVU. We don't know what the future holds for college athletics. Is there going to be some consolidation, further consolidation of, of conferences and, and autonomy schools? I don't know, but I know being in the Big 12 at this moment in time with those four schools coming, coming in uh, puts us in an incredibly positive position. When you have a conference that expands like this and is so much more powerful, how do you think that impacts NIL and Country Roads Trust? Well, I, I think it ex it extends your recruiting footprint for one, and so that's a very positive thing. Um, you know, we've now opened up markets out west where probably they didn't know a lot about uh, about uh, WVU, but um, you know, Landon Wallace on our team last year was from out uh, out west, and and um, you know, and so I think expanding that that way opens up those opportunities um, and uh, gives us a chance. But the trust is more important than ever before because um, we're going to extend our recruiting reach, but we're also so extending the number of schools that are coming in our footprint and they're recruiting, right? And so the competition for athletes is going to be even even heavier uh, because maybe, you know, a school like Utah wasn't coming into Texas as much as they will uh, now, and we like to go into Texas some as well. So, um, so I, I think Country Roads Trust has been a very valuable asset. It's helped us a lot. Um, you know, we saw it even – 
with the basketball transition. Um, you know, what we have with the trust was very impactful in keeping a lot of our roster together and helping us rebuild the roster um, after uh, after Coach Eilert took over. And so um, I, I think it's been important, but it's even more important as we look ahead to the future. Country Roads Trust was recently named one of the top 10 most aggressive collectives in the country. We feel at Country Roads Trust, that's a huge testament to our members who have helped us grow. What does that say about Mountaineer fans? Yeah, I've had more ADs and stuff that have reached out and just talked about how uh, great that is. And, you know, I, I, I want to go back and, 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 and a couple things. Um, one, we don't have a competing interest uh, from multiple collectives, and I think that's really helped us coalesce around Country Roads Trust and really support them, um, both as an athletic department and in the things that are permissible by NCAA, but for the fan base as well. Um, huge credit to Ken Kendrick and Oliver uh, Luck for uh, their their role and what they've done to establish a trust and keep it going. And, and to the staff there, you, Grant, Steven, the whole team, um, we're so thankful for, for all of you. But most of all, we're thankful for Mountaineer Nation. They really have, whether it's buying the lager or, buy, or buying shirts or, or just uh, becoming a member, purchasing content, whatever it is that people are doing, um, they've really rallied around it. And, and one of the questions that you have when, when this all started going on was, will that cannibalize other gifts, other ways of support, other donations? And it hasn't. We haven't seen a drop off in the number of our donors and, and, and in the level of our support. And yet um, Country Roads Trust has, has uh, unpacked a little bit more. I always use the the uh, church example. I always talk about growing up in, in uh, a charismatic church in rural Oklahoma you have your tithes and offering every Sunday, but one Sunday a month is Mission Sunday. And so um, people are still giving their tithes and offering to the MAC, um, and, uh, but they're digging a little deeper one Sunday a month to help Country Roads Trust, and, and that's very important for our student-athletes. All right, Ren, thank you so much for your time. And if you'd like to become a member of Country Roads Trust, go to countryroadstrust.com slash join.